let's take a look at our next free response question. So here we have to find the ratio and the first term for a geometric sequence. And I gave you A3 and A7. I think one of the key phrases here is geometric. So when you're thinking geometric series, right, that's that formula A sub n equals A sub 1 times R to the n minus 1. So keeping in mind that's the formula that you can use. Now for this, I gave you A3 and A7. And think about how do I get from A3 over to A7? Well, if I multiply by R, that would get me to A sub 4, right? If I multiply by R again, that gets me A sub 5. By R again, A sub 6. By R again, A sub 7. All right, so what that means is that A sub 7 is actually A sub 3 times R to the fourth because it takes four ratios to get from three to seven. And that can help us figure out what R is. That's how we'll start. All right, so if I start to take a look at that, I know that 25 out of 648 is going to be 50 times R to the fourth. Now, if I wanna start, start to solve for R, this is now just a solve for your variable. It's a power equation, so I'm gonna divide both sides by 50. And let's see what we're getting. We will have R to the fourth, and let me go to my calculator for a moment. Oops, wrong thing. Let me get out of this, and let's do, we would have 25 out of 648, and I want to divide that by 50. Now that's a fun little fraction, so let's figure out what that is. It looks like it is 1 over 1296, or you could leave it in decimal form, but I've got 1 over 1296, and then if I want to solve for R, what I need to do is take the fourth root, right? So you can think of it as taking the fourth root of both sides if you want, and those would cancel. And that would give me r. Now, I, I'm going to, on my calculator, convert this to a rational exponent. This is really 1 over 1296 to the 1 fourth. So let's see what that number is. I'm going to take this number to the 1 fourth. And that gives me, well, 0.17. But let's look at it as a fraction. And it looks like it's 1 sixth. OK. So I know r is 1 sixth. So there's half of my battle. All right, the next thing I need to do apparently is find a sub 1. So again, we're going to go back to our, our formula and use that. But I'm going to use, since I have a sub 3, I'm going to say a sub 3 is a sub 1 times r squared because it takes two multiplications of this ratio to get from a1 over to a sub 3. So we would know 50 is equal to a sub 1 times 1 6 squared. So 50 equals a sub 1 times 1 over 36. I'm going to multiply both sides by 36. Right? And if you think about 50 times 36, that's going to give me 1,800. So a sub 1 is going to be 1,800. And there I am. All right. So again, I wanted to stress this is geometric. So we can use those formulas. Don't use the arithmetic sequence or series formulas because they don't apply. All right. So if we look at part B, I, again, I want to stress, you see the arithmetic stuff coming up. Now, I do have the sums here. So we're going to be dealing not just with the arithmetic sequence formulas, but the arithmetic series formulas, right? So at some point I know that I can use a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, right? That'll help me with the sequence. And then I'm going to ultimately need that for s sub n. So there are, oops, not, there we go. We do have two series formulas. So let's just pause a moment and see which one seems more applicable when we get there. So as I start to look at this, I know I've got a sub 3 and a sub 12. So let me go ahead and use that. So I know a sub 12 is going to be a sub 3 plus 9 of the differences. In the same way, if I scroll back up, that we, we basically did that over here, that to get from a sub 3 to a sub 7, we needed four ratios. Well, to get from a sub 3 to a sub 12, you might not have been able to see that highlight, a sub 3 to a sub 12, we need nine differences. All right, and I'm using difference because we have arithmetic sequences in this case. So we've got 32. That's going to be equal to 5 plus 9d. And when I start to solve that, I'm going to get 9d is equal to 27. And that's going to tell me d is equal to 3. Great. Another great thing to have whenever you're dealing with arithmetic sequences is not just the difference, but we love a sub 1. That's always helpful. In the same way that, let me scroll back up, it's always helpful in geometric sequences to have your ratio value in a sub 1. All right, so let's see if we can find a sub 1 here. So I do have a sub 3. So that will be a sub 1 plus 2 differences. And let's fill, fill all this in. We have 5 equaling our variable we're solving for plus 2 times 3. And if I do a little math there, I'm going to get a sub 1 is negative 1. So I'll keep that in mind. So since I have a sub 1, 
and I have D, I'm going to use this version of the summation formula. This is going to be n over 2, right? And we would have 2a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times D. I have almost all of those pieces. All right, and if we want s sub 10, we're going to do 10 over 2. This is going to be 2 times negative 1 plus 10 minus 1 times 3. All right, and then it's a matter of just filling this in. So let's, let's go see what we've got here. This is going to be 5. We've got negative 2 plus 9 times 3. So negative 2 plus 27 is 25. So I have 5 times 25, which would give me 125. And there's my answer. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye.